Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Hurt Monday number 28 and we have a good one. Today we are going to be talking about one of the most popular snakes in the pet trade and definitely one you don't mind putting your hand in its cage. Today we are going to be talking about the AM. The rubber boa. Rubber boa or a scientific name Carina bate. Again that is Carina bate. It is part of the family Boidae, which is the family of boas. But he thought it. It is the most northerly of all boas. It is found throughout the northwestern U.S. Um, you kind of think Pacific Coast, east to western Utah and Montana. They can basically be found in any habitat or elevation, but they don't really like it hot. So don't think like your dry, sandy habitats. Think like the upper. Um, the upper forest sort of thing or on the upper hillsides these things are apparently very popular um they can live in surprisingly cold environments most snakes like it warmer these snakes apparently don't mind it cold and in fact kind of prefer it that way that's um as you can tell in this picture it is one of the smaller boa species it's definitely not a gigantic boa um your adults can be from 38 to 84 centimeters that seems to be the, right well, that's a pretty large range um, basically um, that's about 1.25 to 2.75 feet long anything from a foot and a quarter to two and three quarters feet long um, again that's 38 to 84 centimeters now where does the name come from well the name actually comes from their skin um, their skin is very often looks loose and wrinkled and they have very small scales and these scales are not keeled and because of those scales not being keeled they're very smooth and very shiny so that kind of makes them look like a rubber um he's a rubber they have you know they look very pliable they look like very bendy but in fact that's just how their skin is um their colors are typically a tan to a dark brown they can drastically vary. Sometimes you can go from a you know, black, as we saw in the previous picture, to kind of a yellowish picture. Um, however, newborns are actually very often pink when they're born. Um, and then they just darken up as time goes on. Um, but they do have, um, you know, they, they do have usually have a uniform color. They're not really, they don't really have a lot of coloration in their bodies. Um, they do have very small eyes that have vertical pupils and they as you can tell in these pictures They have a really short and blunt head. That's very um, It's not much if any wider than the body. It's a, just a very short blunt head basically looks like a continuation of the body um, and as you can see in this picture the tail is also Very short and blunt that entire thing is basically the tail right there it doesn't have that nice taper that you would expect on most snakes. It's just another short, blunt end. Um, basically, nothing looks like it. It's very hard to get this snake confused with another snake. I don't think you really could. Um, basically, if it has a looks like a bitten off tail, you can kind of think you can kind of see that, and it just has that real. They're also very, very slow moving. Very slow. Now these feed primarily on young mammals, um, so think like shrews and voles and mice. Um, but something that's interesting about these, um, when they encounter a nest of these of young shrews or voles, they will actually try to consume the entire litter. And what they'll do is they will fend the mother off with their tail. So as they're eating, they're flicking their tail and the mother rat or shrew is basically attacking the tail because she sees that moving. And that's why these tails usually have a lot of scarring um, in the wild. So it, it looks like they've been beat up to the point that it's, it looks really bad. But that's actually just because if they find a litter of young mice or something, um, they will eat those mice as the mother is attacking the tail. Um, because these are not an aggressive snake. But we'll get into it. 
They will also eat lizard eggs and other snake eggs. They seem to eat other snakes. They'll eat baby birds. They'll eat small birds. These kind of eat whatever they can get a hold of. Um, they don't seem too particular, but they do predominantly seem to be eating those young uh, shrews and voles. Um, however, in terms of what eats them, they're kind of eaten by anything that they can that can catch them that wants to eat. Um, when threatened, these snakes will curl into a ball around their head and protect their head, basically. And they'll use their tail to mimic their head, uh, trying to get a predator take a bite of the tail and you know be satisfied with that and leave. But most things are just gonna eat these holes, so it's not a very good um, defense mechanism. Their predominant defense mechanism is the fact that they are a very secretive snake and they really only come out in. So not really much in terms of defense. Um, something that is interesting, they are a viviparous species, meaning that they give live birth. Not a lot of snakes do that, but this is one of those. And because of all these characteristics, these are actually, this snake is actually very, very popular in pet trade. Uh, very popular in amateur herpetologists or amateur snake handlers really trying to figure out what they do and how to handle a snake. These are very, very easy to take care of. The issue with it is, is, is that these snakes are known to live 40 to 50 years um, in the wild. So you can imagine if a captive rubber boa is taken care of, it could live possibly to 60 or 70 years. These things can live a very, very long time. And a lot of people are not compared to that time commitment. Now, the interesting fact that we're gonna end today's video on, you remember I said nothing really looks like this, this snake. Well, nothing acts like it either. Um, one of the reasons why this is such a popular pet in the pet trade is that this is one of the most docile of boas and when i say the most docile i actually mean that it's possibly the most docile snake in the world except for maybe like sand boas but definitely the only one of this side you know you talk about a two foot long snake you know and it's just insane how easy these are to handle these um, are known to never strike or bite a human under basically any circumstance. Um, you know, it's kind of insane what you can do to these snakes and they will not bite. However, they will release a very uh, strong smelling musk. So basically, if they do feel threatened, they'll release um, a foul smelling liquid from their um, cloaca, which is basically a, a way of saying, leave me alone and you won't smell so bad, but I'm not going to bite you. Um, but these snakes are actually so docile that rubber boas are often used to help people overcome a phobia of snakes. So when people want to, um, you know, conquer their fear of snakes and want to get over that, rubber boas are often used by snake handlers to help people overcome that fear. And these are also very commonly used for um, uh, people to take and uh, give them to kids, show them to kids, show snakes to kids to get them scared. Because there's almost nothing you can do to make a rubber boa. But thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate it and I hope to see you again. If I don't, please be safe. Have a great day. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you do, I'd really appreciate it. Please give me a comment on something you'd like to see. I would love to see some more comments. I hope you've been enjoy enjoying these videos. I know I have. But thank you guys so much again. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones.